the Quran is one of the most unique and remarkable books mankind has ever known. The whole Islamic religion is based upon this one book. The Quran is considered as the direct speech of God which was later recorded in written format. It is the last and final message God has sent for the whole of mankind. So in order to live up to this unique status, it must contain some exceptional information. What does the Quran make so unique? And how do we know it's from God? Scientists have been successful in finding out what part of our brain we use when we lie and deceive. This was only possible with the help of modern technology and equipment. So one of the main candidates is right about here, uh, right above your forehead, it's called the cingulate gyrus, involved in a lot of different functions. But what we find is that when we knock this area out or we remove this area, people no longer deceive and they don't deceive very well. Now let us go back 1400 years to a place in the middle of nowhere called Arabia. Allah revealed the following verses of chapter 96 to his prophet, where he describes a disbeliever who denies the signs of his Lord. The definition of forelock is a lock of hair growing just above the forehead. The Quran described this part of our head as sinning and lying. So one of the main candidates is right about here, uh, right above your forehead, it's called the cingulate gyrus, involved in a lot of different functions. But what we find is that when we knock this area out or we remove this area, people no longer deceive and they don't deceive very well. Now, before all the Christians start commenting on this video, saying Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, we want to say that we don't care about your beliefs. We Muslims affirm in our own belief. If you really were on the truth, you would not be always commenting on Islamic videos. And for our Muslim brothers and sisters, we want to say that there is no benefit in arguing with these kind of people. Remember these are the same people who claim that 1 plus 1 plus 1 can give you 1. Just like there's no point in arguing with the atheists, who claim that 0 plus 0 can ever possibly give you 1. A lot of the doubters claim that Muslims misinterpret these verses to fit science. First of all, these people don't know one word of Arabic, so they are in no position to tell us the right meaning of the Quran. And secondly, we have never claimed that the Quran contains any science. The Quran only contains science. <laughs> Some people will say this sign was just a mere coincidence, a lucky guess. We would like to ask these people if these signs are also coincidences. For nearly a century, fingerprints have been the gold standard of forensic science. And for good reason. Fingerprints are one of the earliest features to develop inside the womb. The pressure of amniotic fluid across the surface of the hands and the growth rate of the fingers influences the formation of patterns on the fingertips. And with so many factors in play, everyone's prints are unique. <laughs> Unbelievers doubt the resurrection will ever take place and argue that when our bones have been disintegrated in the earth, there's no way we could be reassembled as we were before our death. 
but in this verse, Allah answers that he can not only assemble our bones, but can also reconstruct perfectly our very fingertips. This makes it a great challenge, when you know that every single human being has a unique fingerprint. Of flowing water on the surface of Mars, this finding it's a game changer. Now, water raises hope that the cold, dry, so-called red planet may sustain life. Scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory say new images from the surface of Mars may hold evidence that flowing water exists on the planet. This means a lot for our quest for life outside of planet Earth. If it's confirmed, the finding could help immensely in the search for other forms of life in our solar system is to find flowing liquid water which can one day perhaps sustain life. To get life off the ground, what do you need? Three things. One, energy, like sunlight. Two, organic chemicals. Three, liquid water. <laughs> وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ The Qur'an uses a word to describe a natural phenomenon, not in any detailed way, but to point to a direction with the assumption that there is a divine power and wisdom behind it. And, and when you ponder upon that natural phenomenon, in your primitive way or intellectual way, in any way you want, and you could be totally wrong about it, the conclusion would always be that Allah deserves worship. And the interesting thing about the Qur'an that it would use words that can address a primitive mindset, 7th century, or even more of a modern mindset. It doesn't give you any details, no miraculousness behind it. But what the miracle is from that point of view, that, that the Qur'an has the ability to use words to refer to natural phenomena that can be understood and reflected upon timelessly. That's the power. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends miracles is to show mankind this person is not a liar. He is not a fraud. He is not a charlatan. He is indeed somebody whom I am helping. And I will prove this help to you in a manner that will beyond the shadow of a doubt manifest itself as being directly from God. And so when our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, the Quraysh also demanded miracles. They demanded miracles as well. And they said, why don't you cause the angels to come down? Why don't you split up the earth and cause rivers to flow in this barren land of Mecca? Why don't you make this desert into a green area? They wanted miracles. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them miracles. He gave them many miracles, but he gave them the ultimate miracle as well. And that is the miracle of the Quran. How and why is the Quran the ultimate miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And the response to that is that all of the miracles of the Prophets that were before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were temporary miracles. Let me ask you, has anybody seen the splitting up of the Red Sea? Did anybody witness that? Were any of you there? So those miracles were miracles to those who saw them. The miracle of the Qur'an removes the time-space constraints on all the other miracles. And that is why the miracle of the Qur'an is called the eternal miracle, the everlasting miracle. It is a miracle I can touch, I can feel, I can see, I can recite. These are a miracle my senses can attest to. The fact that Allah mentions facts and points in the Qur'an that were humanly impossible to know at the time and era of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And all of you are familiar with some examples of these. And the most clear example in my mind is the description of the human embryo. How Allah describes the evolution of the human embryo from the sperm and the zygote 
from this small little clinging thing. Allah calls a child in the womb. Allah calls it that which hangs. Al-alaq. Khalaqna al-insana min alaq. No human being knew that an embryo hangs from the womb of the mother. Nobody knew this until 300 years ago. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it that which hangs. It's a hanging thing because it is a clinging to the embryo of the mother. Ya ayyuhan nasu in kuntum fi raybim min al-ba'ath fa inna khalaqnakum min turab fa inna khalaqnakum min turab thum min nutfat thum min alaq ثم من علقة ثم من مضغة مخلقة وغير مخلقة مخلقة وغير مخلقة لنبين لكم ونقر في الأرحام ما نشاء Intensive studies of the Quran and Hadith in the last four years have revealed a system for classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century AD. Little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th, 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolutely, absolutely no scientific training. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls an embryo that creation which we created in three veils of darkness. And if you look at the layers of the embryo, there are literally three layers that separate the embryo from the outside world. So many precise things in the Quran. Here is a cross section of the embryo. And there are three important uh, layers to remember. These are the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Yet another miracle of the Quran is a very strange one. The effect that the Quran has on those who listen to it. It is unbelievable that this book can be heard by those who don't even speak the language and yet it moves them to tears. Moves them to tears. <laughs> Many of you here do not speak the Arabic language and yet when the Quran is recited your Iman goes up you feel humbled you feel the awe of the Quran it is a feeling that is not describable many of you don't speak Arabic but you're standing behind the Imam and he's reciting the Quran and from some strange reason you understand that these are verses pertaining to mercy. When the Quran is recited, it brings grown men to tears. Grown men sobbing because of this voice, because of this recitation. What other recitation can do this? <laughs> يا بني اركم معنا ولا تكن مع الكافرين قال سآوي إلى جبل يعصمني من الماء When somebody listens to Shakespeare, does he start crying? Does he start going up and down his emotions? When somebody listens to any language he doesn't understand, is he affected? Nothing affects a person like the Quran. And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. That when they listen to the Quran, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى الرَّسُولِ When they listen to what has been revealed to the Rasul and they have Iman, Allah says, their eyes well up in tears, they begin to cry. Allah says this of non-Muslims. وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيدُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ They began to cry because they realized this is the truth. And so the very fact that the Qur'an has such a profound impact 
on those who listen to it is clearly a miracle. And this is something you don't need to be an Arabic speaker. When somebody wants to know the miracle of the Quran, show him a video of somebody making tilawah. Allah says in the Quran, we have sent down iron. وَأَنزَلْنَا hadid. Earth is the only planet that we know of that has iron to this quantity. And iron is not a product according to modern scientists of the sun. Iron is something that scientists cannot explain. Where did it come from on earth? And a large percentage of the earth is iron. And the latest theory says that iron was formed by meteorites coming in at a certain point in time before the earth solidified. Meteorites came in and the iron was implanted inside the earth because iron is not created from the fusion of helium and hydrogen. Iron is not a byproduct of other things that the sun possibly can create through nuclear fusion. Iron is that which we don't know where it came from. And Allah says out of all of the elements, Allah mentions this one element. And He says, as for iron, we sent it down. We gave it to you. It didn't just, we didn't just bring it out. It was sent down. And the latest theory indeed says that. And we believe in the Quran without scientific theories being updated and changed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that this element is a special element that I have given to you. The origin of the universe is the origin of everything. Multiple scientific theories, the most widely accepted explanation is the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory states that the universe began as a hot and infinitely dense point. This tiny singularity violently exploded. The Quran is full of stories of the previous prophets of the previous nation. It mentions Fir'aun, it mentions Haman, it mentions Thamud, it mentions Moses and Jesus and Mary. It mentions all types of stories. The stories of the Arabs and the stories of other than the Arabs. Now most people don't understand and realize this point. But when the Prophet Wasallam was in Mecca, there was no library in all of the Arabian Peninsula. The people in Mecca were an illiterate backward nation. They couldn't read, they couldn't write, they didn't have libraries. People at the time of the Prophet ﷺ did not know the details of these stories. They didn't know them. Where did this come from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran. He says in the Quran, these stories are from the knowledge of the unseen that we reveal to you. Neither you nor your people before you were aware of these stories. This is the miracle of the Quran. And notice as well how precise the Quran is in the stories. One example, we have so much to say but little time, just one example. In the time of the Prophet Yusuf السلام, the pharaohs of Egypt were expelled by an outside dynasty. You see, you know there's lines of pharaohs, Fir'auns. The pharaohs of Egypt were a royal dynasty and more than one dynasty existed. Right before the coming of Yusuf السلام, those pharaohs were expelled by a foreign invading force. And Egypt was ruled by a line of kings that were not pharaohs. And this is well known historically speaking. So therefore, to call them pharaohs would be a mistake. But when you look at the Old Testament, and you see the story of Joseph, it refers to the ruler of Egypt as a pharaoh. But he was not a pharaoh. Of that family, he never called himself pharaoh. It was a different dynasty altogether. When the Quran talks about the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, what does it say? وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ And the Malik saw, and the Malik said, and the Malik dreamed. Al-Malik, the king. And when it talks about Musa, اِذْهَبْ إِلَى Fir'aun. Go to Fir'aun. When it talks about Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The Malik said, bring him to me. وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ اُتُونِي بِهِ This precision of telling a story, it is humanly impossible that the Prophet ﷺ was aware of these facts up until recent times people would call the rulers of Egypt all pharaohs but technically that's not correct they were not pharaohs for only 150 years they were not pharaohs and in that time Yusuf's story occurred and so Allah does not call them pharaohs He calls them the king Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
And now I hope we understand the beauty of why and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they ask you for miracles. They want you to bring forth many, many miracles. Allah says, أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ Isn't it a sufficient miracle? Isn't it enough for them that we have revealed this book that is recited for them? Verily in it are signs and tokens for men of understanding. In the Quran is enough of a miracle. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you have in your possession, you have in your possession the greatest, the grandest living miracle that Allah has blessed any prophet with. My concluding and parting advice to me and to all of you, cherish this miracle. Cherish it, love it, read it, recite it, appreciate the miracle and announce this miracle to the world. And when we love the Quran and when we show that love to the Quran, then indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us through the Quran and raise us because of the Quran and grant us the izzah and the peace and the honor that we want as a result of our love and dedication to the Quran. تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز الحكيم إنا أنزلنا إليك الكتاب بالحق فاعبد الله مخلصا له الدين ألا لله الدين الخالص